Welcome to MMT Chats. This episode brought to you by ISCAR with new ideas for machining intelligently. I'm Christina Fugis with Mold Making Technology and I am here with the owner of MR Mold, Rick Finney. Hi, Christine. Welcome. And Rick is also the winner of this year's Society of Plastics Engineers Mold Technologies Division Mold Builder of the Year Award. I got it. Congratulations. Thank you very much. How do you feel about that? I'm very flattered and um, I, um, I want to thank everybody for voting for me and, and uh, um, you know, I, I will do my darndest to live up to, uh, to the award. You always do. You well, always it's, do. You know, it's a challenge in this industry, you know, it's an ongoing challenge trying to get people into this industry. Well, that's true. And I've been working with local schools and education and doing training classes and and um, so I've, I've been doing my darndest to give back to this industry. I've, I, it's treated me well. I've met a ton of great friends. And now it's giving back to you by honoring that. So let's rewind. I know who you are. I know, I know somewhat of your journey. So why don't you let people that are watching, how did you, what is your journey briefly into mold making in the plastics industry? Well, my father was a tool and cutter grinder, and uh, so a tool and cutter grinder was a was a supplier to the tool making or mold making industry. So I'm old enough that back in the day we didn't have CNC lays and CNC mills and CNC EDMs, and so if you needed a shape and a piece of steel, you had to have a cutter that had that shape on it, much like we use a router bit with uh, in, in woodworking, and. Um, so that's where I first started out is making cutters and then I ended up by going to work for one of my father's customers who was a mold maker and then I worked my way up and, and left and started my own business and um, so I've been doing this ever since you know that uh, um, you know it started out from the roots of of the you know tool making to, to you know making the cutters to make molds and then actually make the molds yeah. and and then design the molds and so on and and uh, you know we've done a lot of business in the plastics industry but our roots are really in the silicone industry where it's really where I started out and um, you know and it's it's a niche that we have and it's a niche that we market because I mean this this entire room is filled with two dozen uh, mold makers in the plastics industry yep. and not a, one of them in the silicone. Exactly. You know, it's a nice so, niche. So it's, uh, it's helped keep us busy. That's good. All right. So why don't you talk a little bit about collaboration and partnership, which I think happens a lot within the mold making community. And I know you've recently partnered with Sodic. Um, I know Sodic from the EDM, the metal cutting side of the business, but they have molding machines. Mm -hmm. So you actually are running a mold with them. Talk about the collaboration and what is the What's the importance of this project with them? Well, we always try to support each other. Uh, you know, we work together in the industry. We cooperate at these trade shows and so on. We're always, we have common customers. We're always trying to help each other. And Sodic makes very nice equipment. And when they asked if they would, could borrow one of our molds for this trade show, we were happy to help out. And um, the mold makes a medical device. It's a duck bill and um, it's uh, running fully automatic. Uh, it's running uh, uh, runnerless with no waste. It has a cold runner system. And, um, um, you know, we've cooperated together with uh, the silicone manufacturer and the pump manufacturer. And, and it's, 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 it's a good collaboration. It's a very close-knit community that we have. We're friends with, with all the silicone suppliers, all the press suppliers, all the pump suppliers. And, and um, so it's... Uh, it's a cooperation. We all work together and... Uh, it helps we, advance the industry, right? It by does. By working together that way. And, you know, we've, I've, I've done joint calls with uh, these guys at customers before to go and, you know, work toward, on the tooling side, work on, you know, the processing side. And, and um, so when we've made lifelong friends with our, with our partners in the industry I love and, that. and soda concluded and that's what makes it a community more than just an industry right? it, it is it so why not the last time we talked it's probably been about a year and there was a lot of different expansions and investments going on the one that's most interesting to me is the 3d printing side you acquired a used right a used 3d printing system what has happened in this in the year since we've talked and talked about well, it there's there's been a heck of a learning curve you know uh, 
Uh, the fact that we bought a used machine meant that we didn't get a great deal of training and a great deal of aid from the manufacturer. So we've had to do a lot of learning, self-learning and you know, YouTube videos and so on and just or calling colleagues in the industry and asking them how they use their 3D printer and so on. And, and uh, um, so we've been 3D printing our water jackets that we use in our cold runner systems and um, we've been starting to 3D print sample cavities and cores that we can give to customers to show them the capability that we have and kind of learn about the timing and you know how long does it take to make one of these. Oh, and I want to clarify, this is metal 3D printing. It is right? metal 3D printing. We are making actual cavities and cores. There's some finished machining that needs to be done to them, but that's part of the learning curve that we're working on. Just exactly how much stock do we have to leave to finish the OD or to finish the parting line and so on. And you know, what portions of the cavity can we 3D print complete and what portions need a little finished machining. And um, so, it, but it's, it's, it's getting there. We're looking forward to starting to build our first cabins and cores with the machine. That's exciting, stick with it. And, and we're also making samples that we can give to customers, in fact, some of the samples that I recently uh, asked our guys to print are dice. You know, they're metal dice, that, you know, like you play. So one of the jokes that we've been going around is that uh, the processing on the molding machines seem to be random sometimes. And I swear that people are rolling a pair of dice <laughs> to come up brilliant. with the settings. And so we're 3D printing a bunch because next week we're doing a training class. Okay. And one of the handouts I'm planning on giving everybody is a pair of dice. I love it. And say, you know, you're not going to use these anymore, but here's, there you, go. you know. Here's, here's something that we wanted you to uh, understand is that processing is not a roll of the dice. So, uh, That's a good one. So we, we, um, and actually, I also bought a Magic 8 Ball. Remember the Magic 8 Balls yes, that we I had do. when we were kids? Yeah. Because I go out there and I said, how did you come up with this process? You know, and they're like, well, we, you know, and I'm like, you know, I went in my office and I Googled Magic 8 Ball and Amazon brought it the next day. <laughs> and I took it out to my press guy and I said, here, now you've got a way to decide how you're going to process this part. <laughs> you, know, you know, should I use vacuum on this? It is unclear at this time. <laughs> Do you remember all those answers? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Ridiculous answers. So uh, You don't want to do business that way. So that Magic 8 Ball is sitting in the middle of our conference room table, and we recently got audited by uh, ISO, right. and the guy made us put a reference sticker on it. <laughs> all right, so speaking of training and education, I would have to imagine the past two and a half years, with all the COVID, the pandemic, the, the lack of being connecting in person, I know you guys are all about LSR education. You guys are hooked up with universities or institutions, right, to educate. So give me an update on how that changed over the past two years and if there's anything upcoming. Well, unfortunately, I mean, fortunately, we were able to get a class in just weeks before the country shut down. So we were able to get a class in and then last year we weren't able to, to hold a course. And this year we, um, we've, we've signed up with um, Cal Poly Pomona, which is a, um, a polytechnic university in California. And um, so the students in our class are, are going to get 3.2 extended unit credits for their college classes. Okay. And uh, there's five of us that are teaching the class and it's four days, uh, three days in the classroom, one day's a field trip to MR Mold. Nice. And we're gonna have five molding machines set up with with our molds, with just little silly molds that we have that uh, we, you know, not nothing's proprietary. And um, we're gonna have instructors at each one of those molding machines and we're gonna purposely change the setting to make a bad part. Nice. And then Test the students them. have to, the students have to collaborate and figure out what setting is wrong so that yeah. they can fix the defect that's being molded. I love that. So we've got five stations like that. One station is going to be at a, at a pumping unit, learning how to operate the pumping unit for silicone. And I think there's going to be another static station where we have um, uh, gum stock silicones okay. and, and other type of rubbers that uh, might get discussed during the course of the class. So. People can see what the actual objects, and not just something in a PowerPoint know, slide. Yeah. Touch and feel, and see. Touch and feel. How often do you do these courses? 
In the past, we've tried to do them twice a year. We've tried to do one in February. We've always tied it to the medical show in Anaheim so that we know people are already in the area. They've already flown to Anaheim, okay. and including the instructors. Yep. And, um, and then we've usually done one during the summertime at another university. And we hope to, we hope to restart that again. But uh, during this COVID, you know, the universities have been closed. Yeah, you know, they changed everything. The Cal Poly Pomona, everybody was doing online classrooms. Yep. And, and this, 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 this program that we have is not an online program. No. Maybe this a portion is, of it? it Maybe. Uh, portions of it could have been, but we get so much interaction from the way we really ask the students to ask questions while we're in the middle of our presentations. And I, I tell the, the students, I said, look, the last thing I want to do is stand up here and do a two hour monologue, you know, going through these slides. Help me out, ask questions. It helps me to break it up a little bit. Or help me help you. Yeah, exactly. Ask questions. And chances are the question that you're asking, somebody else might be thinking the same thing. Yeah. Maybe they're a little shy and they don't want to ask the, ask the question. But uh, then, then a lot of times, <clears throat> that question breeds another question. Yeah, always. And then, and then the other thing is the other instructors are all in the class too. And so there'll be a time when somebody might ask a question when I'm up there and I'm like, you know, that's more of a material question. You know, you know, Rick, he's our yeah, materials guy. It. Can you take this one? I think, you know, he's asking about cure time and I think this is more in your field. And so we, you know. More collaboration. <clears throat> more, right? collaboration more collaboration, you know. we. We get the, our other instructors, we know each other so well, we know what their expertise are. So, you know, I might pass a question off to one of the other guys because I think he can answer it better than I yeah, can. Yeah, smart. It's a or, good team. Or there's times when I'm in, you know, I'm sitting in the back and they're calling me and say, hey, this is a tooling question, not a, not a pump question. Exactly. You know? Is there a common question that comes up all the time? Well, probably. I mean, uh, some of the problems with silicone is it's 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 a difficult to clean. It's you know the plastics industry has it so easy <laughs> they don't realize. So when you go to change materials on, and I'm going to exaggerate a little bit, okay. but when you go to change materials on a molding machine, you go take the hopper and you pull it over and you dump all the pellets out of the hopper, you shove it back in, fill the hopper back up with the new plastic, okay. and you just did a material change. Okay. You know, and it's not like that with silicone at all. We have to tear it all apart. It all has to be cleaned. Okay. We have to take the nozzle apart, the screw, the screw tip and everything. And in theory, the whole mixing stack wow. that we have, it's, it's a big project to change materials with silicone. And then, um, <clears throat> you know, they're wanting to know what mold temperature the, temp, the mold should be running at and how to prevent flash. And, you know, there's, there's <clears throat> silicone flashes so easily that we have to design the mold to be so tight the air can't escape. Okay. And so now you get venting issues. Yep. And the plastics industry, again, has it so easy, you just put an ejector pin where you need a vent. Well, you can't do that with silicone because the silicone will flash around the ejector pin. Got it. And so it's and a the, different world. Yeah, in the plastics, you got sleeves and ejector pins and ejector blades, and or you just simply put in a vent pin. It's not yep. even a it's not even an active pin. It's just a thing that has a air passageway yeah. around it. Yeah. You know, and and we don't we can't use all those features. So when is the next course? It's next week, actually. It's next week, okay. So it's not too late to sign up, but you'd have to sign up like right now. Like right away. Yeah. Well, just be on the lookout. And, you know, uh, look but, up MR Mole for upcoming but, courses. But um, we'll, we're, we've, we've already definitely discussed that we'll definitely do another one next year in February, but okay. there might be some discussion about trying to do one in the fall. Okay. So, um, We'll, uh, keep we'll, us posted. We'll, we'll try to keep you posted yeah. and as soon as possible when we when we have a date. Perfect. All right. Thank you, Rick. Now, before I let you go, I have one final request. We have these T-shirts. Hashtag molds make a difference. I want you to fill in the blank. Hashtag molds make. Life saving devices. Absolutely. There you have it. Molds make life saving devices. You heard it from Rick Finney, owner of MR Mold. And for everything mold making, visit moldmakingtechnology.com.